Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today, warning for all cryptocurrency investors. Now, it's not clickbait. We've been talking about the market dip and the market rise and what's coming next. That's the warning. I don't want to be complacent with what's happening. We see one day up, everyone goes nuts and it's as if the bull market is back on. Let's just take one step back, take a look at some of the news, take a look at the charts more importantly and get on with the job at hand to make some profits. All right, make sure you like the video up, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, all the good stuff in the description down below, like the Cardano staking pool, which we've got our first block. Check that out down below. Got some good returns on that at the moment too. All right, let's get on with the crypto warning. Call me a pessimist, whatever it is you need to do. Let's look at the news and try to decipher what's going on and what they want us to hear and understand and what is really going on. You know, we've been through that before, the Wyckoff method. I want to make emphasis of it now that we have it in our emotions and in our memory after a massive dump. Remember April, remember three weeks ago, how much huge, big news there was out there and the price of Bitcoin went nowhere. And then, of course, we just see a massive dump. So right now we've got news out. Ray Dalio buys Bitcoin despite saying governments may ban cryptocurrency. There is a ton of articles, a ton of uh, videos on this one topic and all Ray Dalio has literally said on May 6th before the crash is I have some Bitcoin. That's it. So there's been so much news brought up about this and he's literally said four words about it. I think Bitcoin's gr Bitcoin's greatest risk is its success. <laughs> it goes on to say that after saying I have some Bitcoin. Long term, don't get us wrong. Long term, Bitcoin, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Day by day stuff, If you're, it doesn't matter. If you're in it for the long haul and you've done your fundamental research, probably no big deal. So just put all the news aside and forget about it. For everyone else who is running on a heartstring, uh, bouncing with the market down and up and down and up, maybe maybe just take a step back and to see what's going on as well. All right, let's have a look at some of the other pieces here. I've got Ray Dalio. This is not a new piece of news, but because I've been investing for over a decade now, I love to research what else is going on, what uh, what people do over their history. I think Ray Dalio is fantastic, all right? He's, he's obviously a great investor. He's got billions under management, but everyone gets it wrong at times and then they can also get it wrong going forward. I'm just, you know, I've always got two hats on here because nothing is 100% out there. This is back in 1982. Sorry, that was a long, long rant. But basically, 1982, uh, Ray Dalio went broke. All right, so it's his early days. Okay, I'll give him that. It's 40 years ago. Come on. Um, but getting the timing wrong in cycles. So really, all I'm saying here is just because big investors, big names, big faces out there call something doesn't always mean that it's the way to go. You know, we see it, it's very popular online now, you know, talking about Warren Buffett or Ray Dalio or anyone else in that space. Basically, really just keep thinking for yourself. And these guys, that's what they do. They think for themselves. So just another little reminder while it's fresh in our memories after the big correction in May. Goldman Sachs talking about Bitcoin considered a new investable asset class. I've got this, I just thought, great. You know, it's the bank saying it's a big you know, it's a new asset class now and before they were writing it off and then they're saying it's great and then they talk some other dirt on it. The video I've got here is uh, BitBoy. Okay, biggest Bitcoin news of the century. This is the way I look at news and I guess it's quite different to the way you're expecting it online when you watch a lot of news channels. If that affects my subscribers and my views, what like it is what it is, all right? So I'm going to title things quite similarly because I want to get the attention to... Uh, at least help some people to realize that we've been through this. We've gone through this whole thing of looking at massive news, massive headlines. That's what my videos have as well. Big headlines, biggest thing of this century, best recovery case, you know, this huge stuff. And this is the article that he's talking about. So so um, Ben has, is titling the video this, literally talking about this article. You know, it's written, maybe written by someone else, but it's essentially the same news. Goldman Sachs calls... Bitcoin, a new asset class, and potentially that riles up a whole lot of emotion within the investors. And this is how the Wyckoff method works. You go through these big booms and busts based 
on news and how new investors work with their investing. That's essentially it. It's pretty, it's pretty much that simple. Looking at Twitter. Now, again, more big news by more big names. This, this was the other name I was looking at before. Uh, you got Ray Dalio, you got Warren Buffett. And it's like, what does Elon Musk do? What's in Elon Musk's portfolio? What is What type of investor is he? He's not an investor. He says that himself. But looking at Bitcoin, uh, the post he put up recently, which I guess people say has uh, moved the market again today, spoke with North American Bitcoin miners. They committed to publish current and planned renewable usage and to ask miners WW to do so. Potentially promising. All right, huge interaction here. A quarter million likes, tens of thousands of retweets, and more retwe- retweets here. Wow, English. All right, Bob Lucas has a nice response here. Bob Lucas is a, is a great guy on YouTube and on Twitter. He's the one most famed for the four year cycle, and he's just rolling his eyes at this sort of comment. So, Bob. I guess, understands what these tweets and the news and everything else means. It really just means an eye roll and just continue to follow the cycle and follow the charts. That's pretty much as simple as it is. I honestly don't want to overcomplicate anything that's here. And for new investors, investing is really crazy. You can put money in, takes two seconds to buy something. It can shoot up three, four, five hundred percent. You've just made a ton of money. In our normal lives, we are used to spending tons of hours, tons of work, tons of, it's hard, a lot of heartache, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to make money on a weekly basis. The majority of people go through this every day, but in investing, it doesn't have to work like that. And the psychological game played within this is that we then have to go and overcomplicate stuff, go and find reasons for things, go to news sources. Why is this happening? What's happening over there? Uh, I need to figure out how this is all coming together so I can, uh, you know, beat the next person at the game. And it's like, there is a lot of work that has to be done. But with investing, the rewards can far outweigh the amount of time that you believe you've put into the job. It's a, it's, it's a tricky thing to get by, but eventually if you can push through that, you realize you can make life a hell of a lot easier, enjoy what you're doing, a lot less work, and you don't have to go through these processes of figuring out news and piecing these puzzles together. It's really quite straightforward. All right, if that didn't make any sense, hit me in the comments down below. I I love that topic around the mindset and creating more cash. So let us know down below. Anyway, let's move on with what's going on in the cryptocurrency space. An update, we're at 1.6 trillion on the cryptocurrency market cap. Bitcoin, 700 billion. Ethereum, 300 billion. Binance, number four. Cardano, number five. So we're still looking pretty good. We've had a solid bounce today. Bitcoin, 11%, and uh, a lot of the tops are 20, 30% up, and Matic is the big the big winner here. Uh, so far today is 26, but the yesterday that just closed a few hours ago, I think it was up about 80%. So Matic's had a really solid day. However, we're going to look at that in the charts in a moment. Going back to the warning for cryptocurrency investors as well, apart from the news, let's look at the altcoins against their Bitcoin value. So this is just an update to see how we are. I'm looking at this as a bit of a bounce, a bit of a relief rally, which you guys would know if you've been following the channel. If you haven't, make sure you hit the subscribe button, bell notification icon, so that you can stay updated with the content here. So Bitcoin dominance chart. Now I've got a couple of scenarios that will play out here and then we'll have a look at the cryptos. This is where we currently are. We're at 44%. Remember, months ago, we have a double top. So this is now GAN method, looking at how GAN would have used uh, his his tools that he invented over his lifetime. I'm using a weekly chart here, double top, big, big double top. And Gan says, we should expect around 200% of the move of this range here. We basically hit dead on that. These rules are absolutely nuts. Now it's not always going to hit 200. So I look for around 150 to 161% because that's the FIB number. And Gan used the 50, uh, 50% levels. So knowing that he used the 50% levels, now we can get rid of this double top here. So officially it's off the chart. This double top has played out. It's done exactly what we wanted it to do. That is now off the chart. This was the breakdown. I can get rid of this off the chart so we can clean it up. Now the ma- the macro move here is from the low to the high. 50% is at 56. So 56% Bitcoin dominance. Are we going to see Bitcoin get that high? I don't know. I don't think many people were expecting Bitcoin to be at 40, 40%. 
back when it was on its move uh, in November of 2020. But here we are, 40. So now we're, uh, we've run up to 48, down to 44. This is an overbalance in price, which means I expect more upside. None of this is financial advice. Also, it's not a guarantee. This is just looking at probability. So please, if you're gonna come at comments saying this didn't work or accept whatever, have it in your plan just to buy, hold and, and forget about it. But if you wanna learn how to read charts within probabilities, then this is the way I do it. So we had a, an overbalance here. We've got some good volume. Uh, the 50% level of this macro range, which is from December through to now in May, is at 56. Now this smaller overbalance in price is running up to about 52. So that's 100%. 150% is gonna take us out to around 57. So the two next levels I'm looking at is first the double top at 48, then around 51 to 52%. So that would just bring us slightly short, which would mean Bitcoin is weaker and the alts are gonna run a little further. Otherwise, we got this 50% hit, and then that means that it's an extension of this first range, which means we'll probably see a third. I don't know where this will pull back to. This is just a guess. But if we get an extension in the second run, then we generally see a third run, which is usually equal to this, maybe a bit shorter, but it's definitely, well, it's generally not the same length as the second wave or the second section, as Gan called it. So that's why I've got those measures of around 50 or well, 48 first, then around 52, then around 56. So I'm going to leave these in here. We'll keep coming back to them. Uh, I'll leave that as our first one. But that's the major premise of what I think's potentially going to happen next in terms of the alts against Bitcoin. That's why I have been consolidating, as I've said from the top, that 18th of April when the first crash happened. The first crash, remember that. Uh, that's why I've been consolidating into major projects and Bitcoin. Okay, so, and then buying Bitcoin on the low. I like fresh money into Bitcoin at this time. Matic, here we go, looking at these reasons. So, Matic has had a bounce. I am happy just to sit out of this bounce. That's fine. If you guys made some money, fantastic. Let me know in the comments down below. I am reading your comments and you guys are doing very well. The ones who are making, uh, understanding charts, piecing the news, the fundamentals, the charts together, Congratulations, you're getting it and this might be your time. You know, this is your bull market to, to learn more about investing and to make some good money. Um, yeah, leave your comments down below. It's good to hear, good to see. It, it makes all of this really worthwhile. So, Matic, big volume, big push up. The close is up here, it's looking okay. I am not convinced on these moves just yet because we have had the biggest correction that we've seen and this applies to a lot of the major cryptos. I would want to see a consolidation here, maybe some bouncing out, and then that brings us a stronger structure. The main thing I want to look at is, uh, sorry, this is big, uh, Matic Bitcoin. So that's what I want to see for the strength in it. That's why I'm looking at these potentially drifting again, but we're not there yet. This is just day by day stuff. This is not long term uh, look at the markets. So take that into account. It's a, it's a big drop down at the moment. Let's keep tracking this one. In terms of USD, it's had a good bounce out again, hasn't reached that high. It's in this zone, so that's okay, not bad. I think these were good buys, but in terms of uh, long-term for Matic, possibly uh, a drift back just to get some movement again, you know, to get a structure, a structure forming. So we'll keep looking at it, as I've said many, many times, very good volume on that. Uh, oh, that's on uh, yesterday, but also very good volume on that bounce as well. Looking at Cardano, Again, it's sort of similar, but we're in that zone again. So we've we've managed to escape this area in the middle and we're just creeping our way back above uh, the $1.50 levels and continuing to consolidate at that level. So this was a quick blow off back down, back at these levels. So overall, the trend is still up. We did not get a break of the low. That's a very good sign. Cardano BTC. It is having a little bit of a pullback here. Now I've got the color on the chart. Let's go back to our bars. <clears throat> BTC is looking good as well. It bounced on those highs. That's a good sign. So I'm happy with Cardano. ETH. ETH is bouncing again on its old highs. This is on a weekly chart, so it is a, a longer time frame. Remember, we see volume into that low. Could have bought ETH at 1700, but it was a very scary time. Remember that every time you see big corrections in a bull market as well. In a bear, slightly different, but even so, the, the 
pricing is not too bad when we see these bounces down into 300s. You just have to hold for a lot longer, but they're still reasonable prices long term. That's, you know, it's the positive and the negative there. ETH is looking pretty good. I suspect it's going to get some more accumulation between these levels, which is why I've got a, an alert set at around 3000. If it's to break, then, you know, we start to um, stair step further up as we continue co to consolidate. But yeah, I think these levels are in now. Good volume on that low there. ETH BTC, it has moved up again. Maybe consolidation up here. Again, day by day. Let's put it onto a daily chart. Big volume at the low, another reversal. It's not completely sold for me just yet. And maybe we get a little pullback, push up. We'll keep following it again. It's early days with a lot of these. That's why I'm bringing it as a, a warning to crypto investors just to not get ahead of ourselves just yet. You know, everyone's sort of calling for the start of another bull market. The lows look pretty good so far, but if you're expecting big gains and just to sh take off, I think the probability probability is slightly lower on that. Uh, but it, you know, V-shaped recoveries aren't unheard of, like we saw last year with the COVID crash with the stock markets. What I'm saying here, the warning is, let's not get overexcited and just sort of pile in to expect all-time highs tomorrow. That's the feeling I got from the news earlier on. Vet. I'm bringing this up because you guys are often ask for VET. VET has had a much harder uh, battle from these highs. So these highs were at 28 cents and it plummeted all the way to 5 cents. So it did probably take off a lot harder. It had a lot more retail in the space. But now that low looks pretty decent because sort of sitting around those old highs. So this was the, the breakout after the breakout before the final <laughs> leg into the top. So that's uh, that's come back as support now, big volume. Waiting on this one, it's not out of the woodworks yet. It had a pretty decent move up uh, since the low, but this is against the Bitcoin Valley. So I'm not entirely sold on these at the moment. I wanna see some more structure. And finally, a look at Sol. It is trading okay. Okay, it's a 28. It's not that far from its low, but on Sol BTC, Again, same sort of deal. It is trading just above its 50% of its major range. The downside is, uh, you know, we're still looking at 50 or so percent, but at least with Bitcoin, we have that potential for Bitcoin to remain stable. And if alts bleed, then we're stronger against alts so that we can buy back into some alts down the track. So that's my look at the cryptocurrency markets as an update. The news was the big, uh, the big point that I wanted to make a point of just looking at how I relate to it and how I use it in my trading. In terms of the charts, Bitcoin's looking good. The alts, they've bounced back. That's nice, a nice relief rally. The warning, as I've mentioned plenty of times before, we're not out of the, out of the woodworks just yet. So let's keep tracking them. Uh, get yourself a plan. If you don't, check the videos out on the channel, exit strategy, what to do with the $1,000. It's in a playlist. So go over and check that out. If you found some value from the video, let me know. Hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, thumbs up for the new sound equipment if you're finding nice, uh, nice sound through your headphones or mobile. And I'll catch you guys at the next video or on Instagram and Twitter where I've got daily Q&As. See you over there. Until then, have more fun to get more done.